Continuing with the digestive system, in this video, we will be learning about the small and large intestines. The small intestine is the largest part of the alimentary canal and is structurally extensively coiled. It is the site of complete digestion of carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. The length of the small intestine differs in various animals. Herbivores have a longer small intestine for the digestion of cellulose, while carnivores have shorter intestines as meat is easier to digest. The small intestine consists of three parts, duodenum, the C-shaped first part, jejunum, the coiled midsection, and ileum, the final section that leads into the large intestine. Let us now break down the chemical functions across the small intestine. As the chyme enters the small intestine through the duodenum, it mixes with bile and pancreatic juices that further break down nutrients. Food coming from the stomach is acidic in nature and has to be made alkaline for the pancreatic enzymes to act. Bile is produced by the liver and stored in the gallbladder. It is released when signaled and one of its roles as a substance with basic pH is to neutralize the pH of the chyme. In addition to this, the bile also aids in the digestion of fat via fat emulsification. In other words, it breaks down large globules of fat into smaller globules for more efficient enzyme action. Smaller globules mean more surface area of the fat globules are exposed and this allows for faster digestion. The pancreatic juice, as the name indicates, is produced by the pancreas. It contains a large number of enzymes that digest either carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, or nucleic acids. It contains amylases for carbohydrates, trypsin, chymotrypsin, carboxypeptidase, and elastase for proteins, lipase, phospholipase, and cholesterol esterase for lipids, and ribonuclease and deoxyribonuclease for nucleic acids. These enzymes each contribute differently to digestion, so you can research online to find their individual roles. Other than these liquids, the small intestinal lining itself secretes an enzyme-rich juice called intestinal juice. This contains disaccharides such as maltase, sucrase, and lactase for carbohydrate digestion, peptidases for protein digestion, and lipases for lipid digestion. Additionally, the intestinal juice also contains mucus, which helps lubricate the walls and facilitate regrowth of epithelial cells. All the enzymes released by the three juices together break down the macromolecules into small, absorbable molecules. The small intestine also absorbs the fat-soluble vitamins A, D, E, and K, and the water-soluble vitamins B and C. The vast bulk of mineral absorption also takes place in the small intestine. It mainly absorbs calcium, iron, magnesium, and zinc. Absorption occurs due to the abundant finger-like projections called villi that line the interior wall of the small intestine. Villi are further covered with even smaller hair-like structures called microvilli. Their job is to increase the surface area so that each villus can absorb the maximum amount of nutrients. Each villi contain capillary beds, as well as lymphatic vessels called lacteals. Fatty acids absorbed from broken down chyme pass into the lacteals, while the other absorbed nutrients are taken to the bloodstream through capillary beds. These absorbed nutrients are first taken to the liver via the hepatic vein for processing and filtering. Once detoxified, they are passed back into the blood, which transports the nutrients to every cell in the body. Fats travel to the lacteal because they are hydrophobic. Blood is hydrophilic, so adding them to the blood would cause them to clump up together. So to prevent this, they enter lacteals, which move them to the lymphatic system. Broken down fats are first transformed into lipoproteins, Lipoproteins are complexes made from both proteins and lipids that are hydrophilic due to their specific structure. 
These molecules are too large to enter the blood capillaries, so they enter the lacteal instead. From there, they move through the lymphatic system before finally entering the blood via the thoracic duct. The small intestine, as mentioned at the beginning, is divided into three sections, duodenum, jejunum, and ileum. Duodenum is the first section as it is the part that is directly connected to the stomach. This is where the three intestinal juices are secreted, so most of the digestion in the small intestine occurs here. The chyme, after being neutralized and further broken down, flows into the jejunum. Jejunum is the second section of the small intestine, and here is where most of absorption occurs. Its lining is highly folded into villi and microvilli, containing brush border enzymes. Brush border enzymes perform any final digestion before the nutrients are absorbed into the villi. The high folding of this region allows for increases in surface and hence maximum absorption. It is where sugars, fatty acids, and amino acids are absorbed. The last and final section of the small intestine is the ileum. Ileum absorbs all nutrients that were not absorbed in the first two sections of the small intestine. However, its primary focus is on the absorption of vitamin B12 and bile salts. Moving on from the small intestine, undigested food and some water travels to the large intestine from the ileum. By this time, the work of absorbing nutrients is nearly finished and the only absorption that takes place in the large intestine is of excess water. The final digestion that occurs in the body is by anaerobic microbiota in this organ. They help digest some indigestible fibers and also protect the mucosa from pathogens. Left behind is solid waste, which passes from the colon to the rectum. The solid waste, or indigestible parts of food, also called stool, is stored in the rectum until a set of abdominal muscles contract and increase pressure in the rectum to push the stool out. With this, we come to the end of this series on the digestive system, which covers the bottom half of the gastrointestinal tract. I hope you all understood the beauty and the importance of this crucial body system. Thank you for watching.